Okay. I think we should start. Welcome everyone. Um, if, do we have anyone here who did not attend last Saturday's class and has not had a chance to watch the video? Please just let me know by show of hands. Thank you. We have Kelsey. Okay. Okay, so we have one. Okay, we have two people now who did not attend last week's class and who have not had a chance to watch the video. The reason I asked is because we're going to be using very sim most of um, what we're going to be doing is the same set of tools or the same set of codes that we used last week. So this might this class might go faster. If there's something you don't understand or something you want me to explain some more, please um, let me know. Just pipe in and ask questions. So today we will be talking about, we'll be running through conducting a systematic review and a meta-analysis using difference outcomes. So different difference, basically looking at continuous variables when our effect sizes are, our effect measures are continuous variables we use. This is how we'll go about it. So let's start, you know, by clearing your workspace. I already did that, so I'm not going to do that again. Okay, I did that again. Okay, so clear your workspace so that whatever you have in memory before now is is gone and we can we, you don't have anything potentially confusing your codes. Okay, so this is just and this is just like an overview of what we're going to be doing. We want to understand whether media campaigns increase the mean intake of fruits and vegetables because it's a mean continuous variable. So there and there are two forms of mean differences that you can use because basically in this um, in this paper we have two groups a group that was exposed to the media campaigns, so the intervention group, and then the group that was not exposed, the control group. So we want to see if there's a difference in the mean consumption of fruits and vegetables between those two groups. And so what we're basically going to, what we're basically doing is saying, what is the overall mean in the, in the intervention group? and the overall mean in the control group. And then we'll find a difference. If there's no difference, if the difference is zero, then we're like, well, that, maybe that didn't work. Or if we find, if the difference is not zero, then we start interpreting. So the two forms of mean differences is the weighted mean difference and a standardized mean difference. The weighted mean difference is just the default. Remember that the whole purpose of meta-analysis is to pull effect sizes. And we do that by considering the precision of each primary study and assigning a weight to the primary study based on its precision. So the weighted mean difference is just what you will do normally, averages the mean difference from the individual studies and the weights by how precisely the studies weight estimated so that larger studies contribute more to the pooled effect. Now, the standardized mean difference is used when the mean differences or the means in the different studies were measured in different ways. And basically you're saying we have the primary studies, of course, are measuring the same underlying construct, but maybe they use different tools or different scales to measure the same underlying construct. If you want to pull evidence, then you have to put all of them on, the, on a single scale. And the standardized mean difference is something that helps you. What it does is just like it takes the mean difference and standardizes it by dividing each mean difference by its own standard deviation. So basically, you're no longer, let's say your mean difference is percentage. When you get a standardized mean difference, you're no longer reporting a unit. So standardized mean difference is unitless. It's just, you're just going to say 
the the difference you know like two standard deviations or two standard um two standard deviations difference between groups you're not going to be talking about maybe percentage or meters or kilometers or kilograms when you're when you're using standardized mean difference now what it what it does is then it's just like this unit less thing that's not very intuitive unlike saying um, for instance you can say um, if you use weighted mean difference you can say people in the intervention group consumed on average two more servings of fruits and vegetables per day than people in the um, control group. That makes sense. Anybody can understand that. But by the time you start saying the difference between the control group and the intervention group is one standard, one um, unit of standard deviation. It's a bit, you have to think about it a bit more. So basically to interpret the standardized mean difference, people use this Cohen's convention or the Cohen's, the Cohen's D convention when if the standardized mean difference is between zero and 0 0.2, you say, oh, that's a small effect. And then if it's between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5, it's a moderate effect. 0 0.8 and larger is a large effect. And statisticians will tell you that you don't just consider, you know, like effect sizes or statistical significance. You also have to ask yourself, does this difference, does it, does it have any real life implications? So if we're using standardized mean difference, we are not just, you know, um, robotically reporting numbers and effect sizes. We're actually interpreting and saying, what does that mean in real life based on your knowledge of the subject matter? Okay, so now that we've talked about um, standardized mean difference and weighted mean difference, is there any question before we move on? If you have a question, just raise your hand or unmute yourself. I'll take it that there are no questions at this point, so we'll move forward. So basically, <clears throat> this, first, um, this first section of the code show you how you will calculate the effect sizes by hand. And this assumes that, this is based on an assumption that you don't have the data extraction sheet. So you don't have data extracted already. You, all ju you just have um, the primary studies and you've identified the effect sizes that they are reporting, but you don't have um, data extracted in a sheet of, in your Excel. So you can simulate the variables that you guessed that the study had. Basically, simulation is a random process and you're, you're asking R to randomly generate variables, randomly generate the numbers that would have been in that, that would have been observed in that study. You don't just, and what you do is, I'll, I'll come here, if you look at um, row, if you look at the line 46, for instance, you're basically saying, I know the sample size is um, 600. You can get that from the paper, from the primary study. You're saying, I know the mean, the mean is 2.5, and the standard deviation is 4.89. 4.8934, you know. Based on this information, I want R to generate random, to generate random variables, generate um, a random sample called X1, and then generate another random sample. So this may be like, this is the intervention group. The, the sample size of intervention group is 600, the mean, the standard deviation, and then you specify for the control group information that you got from the primary paper. So we're not making this up. The thing is, you got the summary variables from the primary data, from the primary paper, but you don't know whether you know the 600, whether they mean, whether the individual people in those, um, each of those um, 600 people, you don't know the exact fruit and vegetable intake, whether it was seven, two, eight, you know, so you're asking R to simulate it. 
And here you set the seed. Because you're basically asking R to generate this pseudo random numbers, every time a computer does simulation, it decides the number where it's going to start and does a simulation. If you set the seed, it, it makes sure your work is reproducible. So that if you close this, um, if you close this R Markdown document and you come back another time and you run it again, you'll get exactly the same thing if you set the seed. But if you don't set the seed, R is just going to start at different points every single time. Anyway, so now we've created an object X1 and X, and we've created another object X2 for the control group. And then we tell R, so basically it just creates it. And then we tell R, now I want, I want you to calculate S1. I'm, I, I am um, assigning S1, which will be the standard deviation of this vector X1. And then S2 is the standard devi deviation of the vector S2. I'm telling R my N sample size for the first one is 600 and sample size for the second group is 400. So just setting ourselves up for calculating the mean difference by hand. So now I've told R the mean for the first group is 2.51. The mean for the second group is 2.21. We've calculated, the, I've told R the standard deviation. So, um, the mean difference is just the mean of X1 minus the mean of X2. So if you do that, R tells you this is the mean difference, right? Now, you also need to calculate the standard error. And for you to calculate the standard error, you can get the standard error from the standard deviation, not the standard deviation of the individual groups, but the pooled, standard deviation and this is the formula so s pooled the s pooled is the pooled standard deviation is the square root of the sample size of n1 minus 1 divided by its um, variance plus this is a this is a standard um, formula for calculating the pooled standard deviation and once we get the pooled standard deviation and we can calculate the standard error of the effect of the mean difference. So here's a formula for the pool standard deviation, and here's a formula for the um, standard error of the mean difference. And when you run it, this is what you get. So this is a standard error of the mean difference. <laughs> So if you were interested in doing this, you know, like one study after another for each of your primary studies that you're going to use in the, for the meta-analysis, you will copy this into your extraction sheet and then you will go into, you will go to the next one and do the same. Here we've used the base R, we've used the base R functions. You can also use the ESC package that we used last week. If the first thing you wanna do is to load the package. So if you have it installed, then you just use the library function to call it up. If you don't have it installed, then you want to use install.packages then ESC. You, you run that first before you call it up in your library. And basically you're doing the same thing using a different package. This time around, you need to define the data that you need to calculate your standardized mean difference or the mean difference. And you are specifying what is the mean of group one. Same information we used above, 2.51. This is the mean of group two. This is the standard deviation, standard deviation of group one, the standard deviation of group two, sample size for group one and sample size for group two. And now you can calculate the effect size which in this case is the mean difference. So you're basically using the ESC underscore mean underscore SD function. You are, you're telling this package group one mean, this is group one mean, this is group two mean, like this is the object, this is the name I've assigned to it. And then 
I want you, I want you to calculate the effect size. So if you run that, it will tell you, you know, your effect, this is your effect size. This is a standard error. This is the upper, this is the 95% confidence interval and all of that. So this is another way of calculating by hand your, using error to calculate your effect estimates. What you can do, what the, you can also use the ESCalc package. The ESCalc has the advantage that you can just use, we can do multiple studies at once instead of, as instead of defining this object, imagine if you had 25 or 50 primary studies, you don't want to repeat this 50 times. You just want to be able to put all those things in at first, in, in one go rather. So you can use the ESCalc for that. And we're going to be doing basically the same thing. So you're going to import your data set into R. I hope everyone has the data set. So you, in your library, you call up read Excel, which is what you're going to use to import your Excel, Excel file into R. You call up dplyr, which is for data wrangling in case you need it. And then you assign a name to the object. So read Excel, meta-analysis, um, the, the, I changed the name. So this is not what you have. You have meta depth, but I had an older, an earlier version. So I've just, I've, I've just included it too here so that R is not confused, but basically you can run the, um, can run what you have. So this is, this is us calling in, <clears throat> this is us um, importing the R, um, the Excel. And you can already see here, if you look at my, um, if you look at my environment, you can see that it is now um, imported into R. Is everyone following? Are there questions at this point? Okay. Um, if you are going to, John, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you suspect that you're going to use some um, dplyr functions, then it's always good to load it. If you load it and you don't use it, no problem. But generally, if I'm working with if I'm working with um, a data frame, I just like to have dplyr loaded because you just never can tell when you need to like change something, when you need to, when you need to modify your, um, Sarah. Um, Please speak up. I'm not sure that I understand the question. I will stop sharing. And if you want to share your screen, that's also okay. Um, I'm just not sure. I um, just uh, compared the results we got um, with the calculations by hand and with the package. And for me, at least, they look completely different. Would you like to share your screen? Because I'm not sure that I understand which one looked different. Mm. Here, the standard error is 2.39, 0 0.23. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here, the effect size is much smaller. And also, I think the standard error is a bit different. One minute, I will. Thank you, Sarah. One minute, let me go back. Right. 
to see that. Oh, please continue sharing your screen. I wanted to see that you and I actually got the same number, which we, which we should. Yeah, you're right. The second one, um, Sarah, the second one, I think it's standardized mean difference. Wait, no, don't take that. Don't take that yet. Good one. Mean standard deviation, the number ES calc mean. Don't believe that just yet. You know, I don't know why you're, you're correct. You're correct, Sarah. I don't know why. And I will come back to this. Let's let's run it with ESCalc and see if we get the same thing or a different set of answers. And then we can come back and troubleshoot. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, other questions, comments? Can you see my screen? Please let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, thanks. Okay, so here we are going to, we've, we've, um, we've imported our Excel file. And now we're going to recalculate the mean difference. It's already in our data, but we just want to, we just want to run through it and show that we're getting the same answers. So we're going to use um, the metaphor package. If you've not installed it, then you should um, you should uncomment it and first install it. But since we installed it last week, I'm not going to reinstall it. And then you're basically saying the data frame, ESCalc, the measure is MD, mean difference. Your, um, these, are the, these are the headers, the column headers in your Excel sheet, right? In your extraction, extracted Excel sheet. So basically we're gonna rerun it and we're creating this variable YI and VI, which is the, we're regenerating the measure MD is the YI. So basically we're regenerating it just to compare. So when we run it, ignore the warning messages. I'm just not ready to update my version of R. Okay, so we've run it. We've basically said um, this, we, We've run it and then to confirm okay. your numbers are correct, that is just to look at say, what is in the Excel sheet is exactly the same thing as what you've generated with this command. Let's subset it. So we're going to subset it, select MD, which is what, what you have in the um, Excel sheet and YI, which is what you just generated your, your new measure and then compare the two. And if you do, this is the this is the object. You can see that MD, which is what we had in the, which is what we have in the Excel sheet, the data that was extracted, and YI, which is what you just generated with the ESCalc, is exactly the same thing. 
So this is just to give you a level of reassurance that your code is working correctly, right? Okay. So, okay, the second variable VI is the variance, which is a square of the standard errors of the um, log of the effect size. So now we've uh, now we're going to use metaphor to do the meta analysis itself. What we've done up to this point is just trying to regenerate. Um, it's trying to it's, it's trying to go through the steps if you were going to do this by hand if the data had not been extracted into the Excel sheet for you. So now we're going to do the meta analysis itself, um, and we're using. We're using the RMA. We're using the RMA command, and we're basically saying YI the outcome or the is the is MD. The standard error is this is what it's called in our Excel document. The method is a random if um, sorry restricted um, maximum likelihood. Uh, measure is MD, the data, that's the name of the data. Me media veg that, that's the Excel document that we, we imported. So basically it's using the random effects. That's why we have the remil. If it was fixed effects, we will replace the method with FE. So this is the object. This is the name that we've given the object and we're asking R to summarize it after running it. So here it is. Does everyone have this at this point? Is there anybody who, who is not at this point? Hi. I take it that everybody is at this point. So if you're at this point, will anybody volunteer to tell us what they think about this result? What does this mean? How are we gonna write this out? Sarah, do you want to give it a shot? Hi, if you can hear me, please, can you um, say something in the chat? Because this class is very quiet. Oh, OK. Um, is does anyone want to volunteer to tell us what this means, what this result means? How are you going to write this up? Okay, okay so, I can give it a go. <laughs> please do. Thank you. Okay, so I think the mean difference is 1.09, uh, and this is actually significant. And the between study heterogeneity is quite high with 82.5. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. So I agree with you. I will start by saying, okay, so we ran a random effect model, and there were 13 studies. 13, 13 primary studies, we estimated tau squared, which is the um, 
between steady variance using the um, Remio, model, Remio methodology. Um, heterogeneity is quite high, like Sarah correctly said. The estimate, the effect size is 1.39. The standard error of a, that's the of a pool of a, um, estimate is 0 0.24. It's there's a significant difference, and you can see um, the 95% confidence interval here. Any other thoughts? Any questions before we move forward? I take it that there are no questions at this point. So the next thing we will do is to plot the... Aditola, you raised your hand. Yes, thank you very much. Um, when I try um, running the, um, um, the code, I was like, um, I need to um, loading required package matrix, loading required package method that, and it was like loading error or something. Would you like to share your screen? Yes. Because we used this last week and you were able to use it, right? Yes, yes. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can share your screen. Okay, let me just share my screen. This is it. Okay, I am um, loading required package, loading the metaphor package financial. Check if you have check if you have a metaphor, you still have metaphor installed. All, all right. But I, I believe I've installed all the packages. How do I yeah. check that? Just do install the packages again and it will tell you if you already have it. All right. Yeah, I believe you already. I, I would like to believe you already have it because usually if you open the R Markdown and you don't have some of the packages um, needed, it will prompt you. So, so what, what, what am I to do now? Let's do, look in the chat. All right. Let's see if you have that. Okay, I okay. I don't see why not. How's that going? All right. Let me. Um, I don't even know where to. You can just put it. Why don't you put it like in the? Can you see the um? In your console, just put it in your console. All right. Just put it in your console. Yeah. Are the yeah that way your cursor is blinking yet? Yeah. Let's see what it tells you. Error in install packages metaphor. Will not oh. find the function. Install the pack. Which my I think my 
I think my spelling is wrong. Oh, my spelling is wrong. Install dot packages. My spelling of packages is wrong. Just start typing install. Good. Then the parentheses. Oh, Lord. Let's do the bracket, open bracket. Um, click on here. I'm going to do it again. Install. This? No. Okay. Because I just, I spelled the metaphor in English. Yeah, autocorrect. Okay. Autocorrect is just correcting it. I think that's not the spelling of metaphor. Okay. What is it saying? One, One or more, or more of the packages to be updated are currently loaded. Okay, do you want to restart? All right, all right. Thank you. So okay, let's know if you need to catch up. Um, all right. Okay, so we will we'll continue while Aditola tries to reload. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Oh yeah, so we were going to run the, we were going to do, we were going to plot our first plot. And so at this point, we're just going to call up the command forest this is the name of our model, the model that we set up here. The reference line, the line of no effect is at one. This is the S, this is the label. This is the limit of the, um, the X axis limit. And so we'll run it. And here we are. Does anybody want to refresh our memory as to what this is about? Anybody wants to talk us through this forest plot? Veronica, would you like to give it a shot? If you're in a place where you can unmute yourself. Veronica, are you in a place where you can unmute yourself? Okay. Looks like Veronica cannot. Um, let me see who else. Jerry, would you like to give it a shot? No? Okay. Abraham, thank you. Please go on, give it a shot. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the, from this uh, plot, we can see that uh, this is a random effect model. And uh, the line of no effect uh, is zero. And the other thing, uh, since it is, I think it's mean difference. So uh, we have a confidence interval at the upper and the lower confidence interval. So from uh, from this model, uh, the mean difference uh, is 1.39 and the lower 
confidence interval is 0 0.92 and the upper one is 1.86. So uh, the, the mean difference is above zero. So uh, I think it's positive uh, finding. If I get the point. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you very much. So I agree with you. This is a random effect model. We can see it here at the bottom. Um, we can see the the papers, the author name and study year for each of the 13 papers. We can see the mean difference for each of the studies and the um, 95% confidence interval for each of the studies. We can see the studies that are most precise. And so they have, you know, like the shortest, the narrowest 95% confidence intervals and the bigger boxes. And we can see the diamond, which is our pooled effect size. And like Abraham said, our pooled estimate is 1.39. It is positive, suggesting that people who were exposed to the media campaign at, took more um, servings of fruits and vegetables than those who were not. And we can see the 95% confidence interval does not contain zero. So that means there's a significant difference. The mean difference is statistically significant. No problem, Veronica. So um, do we have other questions, comments before we move on? Do we have questions about this forest plot? I take it that there are no questions, so I am going to move on. So we've We've seen the forest plot, we've looked at the forest plot. So now we're going to explore whether there is publication bias in this um, meta-analysis. And to do that, we're going to we're going to use two methods: the visual method by generating the forest plot, and then the regression test. So here is you call up the funnel function and tell R the name of your, of your object and then the reg test, tell R the name of your object. So if we run that, what do we have? Anybody wants to tell us what they see with this funnel, funnel plot? What? The studies are not listed. There is asymmetry, level of asymmetry. Sorry, say that again. Sorry, I didn't hear you clearly. Abbas, if you're speaking, you're still muted. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, there is um the the finding shows that this uh, there is likelihood of publication bias. If we look at it on the left side, there are only um the number of studies on the left side. Uh, the studies are not um uh how do I put it uniformly distributed on both sides of the funnel. It's like those on the right side, which, yeah, those on this side are not as equal as the ones on this uh, other side. Only two studies on the side you are pointing with the cursor, while the other side have more of the studies. So there is likelihood of publication bias. Thank you very much, Abbas. Any other thoughts? Anybody thinks that there's no, that this is symmetrical? Any? or any additions to what Abbas has shared with us? Abraham? Uh, yeah, thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, in my point of view, I think uh, uh, I have no uh, uh, information 
uh, when we say the threshold that how many uh, how many uh, uh, paper or literature uh, finding uh, uh, in in one side or asymmetrical to say to to, to say asymmetrical uh, we have uh, we, I have no information about the a number of uh, uh, paper that uh, on the two sides. So in in this case, we ha we have I think uh, the the right side have one more uh, uh, one more paper. So uh, I think it's more likely symmetrical. I think in my point of view. Thank you for contributing that, Abraham. Unless we know the number of uh, the threshold that to say the publication bad. Uh, all from the, uh, I think the standard error. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we don't know uh, to 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 completely say the publication bears. But I, Sarah, you want to say something? Go on. I just wanted to add that one reason why we should be um, maybe a bit skeptical is that all small studies or nearly all small studies report a positive effect and all big studies report like a negative one. Abbas, I, Abbas um, can you try to speak a bit more clearly? Oh, okay. So thank you, um, Sarah. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you, Abbas. I think that there is some asymmetry. And why do I say that? It's the, um, if you look at the left side, for instance, the <clears throat> one, the, the studies, the, the smaller studies, so the studies with the um, bigger standard errors. If you look at, we can see some, on the bottom, where we can see some closer to the, you know, like the the end of a funnel. On the side that shows a positive effect side, but there's nothing to balance them out on this side. So that is why I think that there is some there is um, asymmetry. Now, does that asymmetry does asymmetry always mean publication bias? The answer is no. But this um, funnel plot looks asymmetrical to me. So um, let's look at the regression test. Any thoughts about the result of the regression test? Okay, so for this um, test, we're going, we're looking basically at the um, intercept. We're looking at the beta naught value. And in this case, it's negative 0 0.1289. And if you look at the confidence interval, the confidence interval contains zero. Yeah. So what does, what does that say? You explain that once it contains zero. <clears throat> Someone was speaking. Please continue. You said that once it contains zero, then we can conclude that there is bias. Once um, we run this regression model test and contains zero, then we can confidently say that there is bias and there's a symmetry in the study. When the confidence interval contains zero, we can say that the plot is asymmetrical, but we cannot conclude that there's bias because there is more to bias assessment than just the funnel plot. So 
do you do do you get the difference? Oh yes, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, I do. Okay. 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 So now let's go on and do the trim and feel. The trim and feel, like we we learned last week, is an attempt. Is like a is a modeling attempt to say if there was no publication bias or if there was publication bias, or rather, if the studies that are missing are in, if we somehow found the studies that we think are missing, what will the new effect size look like? And what will the new um, funnel plot look like? So let's do this. And here you can see, um, I'm going to go back and run the, I for, I've forgotten what the effect estimate was earlier. Okay, so when we used our primary studies that we found, the effect estimate was 1.39. Now, using the trim and fill, it's here it's saying the estimated number of missing studies on the left side. This model estimates that they're, they're, they're likely for missing studies. Remember, this is all modeling. It's not like it knows for sure, for sure that there are four missing studies. It's just like a lot of simulations and a lot of mathematics going on in the background. But it's basically saying that if we found, if we somehow found those studies, the effect estimate will be lower. It will still be significant. Right? The difference will still be significant, but the effect estimate will be lower. Does it make sense? Hi, everyone. Are you still here with me? Yes, we are here with you. Okay. Questions at this point? Thoughts? Disagreements? Hello, Ma. Yeah. Hello, well, Mariam. Well, one of the effects will be. Um, significant when the confidence interval does not contain zero is 0 0.4 to 1.5. Yes, that's why it will be significant. Remember, this is the effect size of the uh, mean difference now, not the effect size of the egg, of the Edgar's regression test. Okay, I get it now. I get okay. it. Okay. Ma, there's still something I really want to understand about okay. um, estimating the number of missing studies. Now, how, what is the idea behind our giving us like maybe four, if maybe we, we had found four additional studies, this would have been this. How did it come about? What's the idea behind this? So the mathematics behind this is complicated. But it's like trying to model, trying to say, okay, in, let's go back to our forest plot. No, no, not forest plot, the funnel plot. You know that some, some of you said that we think there might be studies missing from this side. The whole idea is, is saying, look, Studies with smaller studies with bigger standard errors, like the let me let me start again. The whole idea is the mean, the true population effect size should be randomly distributed around the central line of the mean difference. Okay. Are then I mean, that is one of the, um, we learned that from the center, central um, limit theorem, right? So R then says, if we, have, if we have studies on this side, let's simulate, the, the studies on this side are the studies that show the positive effect size. Let's simulate what the mean difference would have been. It's all simulation. Let's simulate what, what the mean difference would have been for studies of similar standard error where they found negative effect. And so it is the result, it is then throwing in the result of that 
simulation that we get to this. Does it, does it make sense? I'm trying yes. to explain it in English, like yes. let's not go into the math of it. Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, other questions, thoughts, suggestions? I'll take it to that. It's okay to move forward. Let's keep moving forward. So here, what we've basically done is that we've used the metaphor package to do our, um, we've used the metaphor package to do our meta-analysis, but that is not the only approach or that is not the only package that exists. We can also, calculate the mean differences in this, using this package called meta. So for the next few steps, we're going to repeat what we've already done using meta for now, we're going to use meta. So the commands are going to be different, but basically we're doing the same thing. So we're loading our packages, meta, tidy R, D meta, And then we can, using meta, we can either use the raw numbers from our studies, or we can use data that's already extracted into the Excel sheet. So if we want to use the raw data, we have to, this is what we do. So remember, now we're calculating standardized Now we're calculating standardized mean difference. We're calling this meta count or, um, command. And we're basically specifying, and it's assuming that we're using the raw data. So we're basically specifying and telling our NE is what I call the number exposed. Mean in the exposed is what I call mean media. Um, standard error in the exposed is a standard error in the media group. NC is a number of the unexposed. So we're basically just, you know, like specifying, this is the name of the data that you're going to use, of the data um, frame that you're going to use. And I want you to do the standardized method.mean. I want you to do the standardized mean difference like we learned last week, you have to choose one method, one um, meta-analysis approach, either fixed effects or random effects. So one has to be true and the other one will be false. And then the method dot tau is PM. It's a, it's, a long, it's a long name. So what I can do is I can, I can put the, our documentation for this, command in the chat so that you can read the difference. I tried to memorize the PM, but I keep forgetting. So you can read the different uh, methods that can be specified. So basically, when you're using meta, this is what you do. And you ask R to summarize the standardized mean difference. And here's what you get. It basically just takes everything and tells you you know, these are the, um, the authors, the year, the mean difference, this is what you get. The weight tells you the number of studies, the number of observations, the common effect, the heterogeneity. And then remember standardized mean difference. And then this is your tau. We really, really don't report that. We just go ahead and report the I squared. So, this is what happens when you ask, when you use the meta package to generate your meta, to do your meta analysis from raw data. We can also do the same using the pre calculated effects. The pre calculated effect is basically like, you know, if you, look at the, if you look at the Excel sheet that you have, 
you have the raw um, data on one end and then the calculated effect on the other end. So here is TE, the treatment effect. So you're basically telling, you're, 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 you're telling the meta package, the treatment effect is the mean difference. I've already calculated it, is the mean difference. So go and look at the column called MD. The standard error of the treatment effect, I've already calculated it for each paper. Look at the column called um, SC underscore MD. This is how I want you to label. This is what I want you to, the study label is author year. The name of the data is DF. I want you to do um, mean difference. I'm still doing fixed effects um, meta-analysis. So fixed is true, random is false. The method is remo, and then I want you to I want you to give me a summary of this mgen, this object that I have specified, and this is what we have. Is everybody at this point? Questions, thoughts? Okay, so this step is basically, is doing the same thing that we did above, except that now we're specifying that as a standardized mean difference. And same thing that we have, same output, same, um, same type of output. Okay, so we can generate the forest plots and the forest plot basically just lets you, with meta, you can, it gives you a bit more flexibility. You can add in a little more, a few more parameters than what happens with the metaphor um, package. So you can specify a few more things. So this, this is a study, the author and the um, year. This is the mean difference, the standard error of the mean difference. And then the 95% confidence interval, the weight. So you can basically just specify more things in the, um, what's it called? In the forest plot for, can you still see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Um, so basically, Using the meta package, you have a bit more flexibility with your forest plot than when you use the metaphor. And um, here you can also specify um, the layout you want. This, you know, like nice, pretty colors. If you are particularly, if there's a journal that, the, if the journal, there's a journal you want to submit to and they have their own layout. Like for instance, the JAMA, like we saw last week, you can also do that. So basically, Meta gives you some more flexibility with your forest plot than uh, Metaphor. But the forest plot, I'm not explaining the forest plot again because it's the same forest plot we saw earlier, it's just different layout. So questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, so I take it that there are no questions at this point. So everything we've talked about up to this point is really talking, it really applies to normally distributed data, at least approximately normal. But if your continuous data is skewed, so that's the continuous data from the primary studies, if it is skewed, then you don't want to use the mean difference or the standardized mean difference. You want to use the log ratio of the means. And what, what happens is basically, so the log ratio is a form of transformation that you use to bring the mean 
and you know, like the effect, the effects uh, estimate from the individual studies that are skewed, you're trying to make them approximately normal. And what you do, you can use ESCalc to calculate the um, ratio, log ratio of the mean for each study. So we're not just calculating the log ratio of the mean for the overall effect size or the port effect size, we're doing it for each study. And then you just, once you've done it for each study, you run the um, meta-analysis, whether it's fixed effect or um, random effect. And so similar to what we've seen before, we use the ESCalc, but we specify that the measure we're using is the ratio of the means. And once we specify that, then R knows to apply the log ratio of the means and to do the transformation. And similar to what we did earlier, this is like calculating it from the raw data. So we tell R for N, N1i, I want you to look at the number exposed for the M1i, the mean in the media group, you know, like that. And once we do that, once we do that, we already have it. We already have um, the new effect estimate. Now it is no longer mean difference or standardized mean difference. It's the log ratio of the means. And then we do the meta-analysis the same way. Use, we call metaphor, we, we, now we're assigning it to this object, rom.model, we use the RMA command, and we're telling it my outcome now is yi um, ratio of means, this is the variance, I want you to use a RMA method. The measure that I'm using is, um, log ratio of means and the data that I, the data frame that I want you to consult is DF1, which is what we set up here. And we just run it. And this is what we get. Very similar, it's still telling us we're using, um, we have 13 primary studies. We used the Remu model to estimate the tau squared. Our um, I squared is now slightly different. And the estimate is 0 .46, 0 0.47 approximately. This is the um, standard error. And these are the confidence intervals. It is still significant. And remember, we are no longer, we're not going to interpret the estimate in terms of means. It's the log ratio of the means. So we are going to interpret it in terms of percentage. So this is 47%. So in, intake of fruit and vegetables was 47% greater. And we say it's greater because this is the estimate is positive, right? The intake of fruit and vegetables was 47% greater in those exposed to media campaigns compared to the others. So that is how you interpret the log, um, ratio of the means. And if you generate the forest plot, very similar, you know, like very similar forest plots outlook, except that this is now, this is now the pooled estimate. It's 0 0.47 with its 95% confidence it's over 0 0.33 to 0 0.61. So, Questions, comments, thoughts about log ratio of means? So we've come to the end of the class. If there are no questions about this one, but um, if there are general questions about what we've discussed, I'm happy to take them. Okay. So I'm going to stop recording at this point.